Part 1 of the 3.16 Balance Manifesto is here, covering flasks and ailment mitigation. And I have to say, I am pretty excited. The changes that we're mainly seeing here are going to be a slew of buffs as well as some very small and reasonable nerfs, as well as moving a lot of power from the way that items are rolled when it comes to flask into the actual base flask themselves. But saying that, they are actually even adding more power back to the flask at a high level. On top of that, we are getting a ton of ways to mitigate ailments and and I am happy to say, for the most part, freeze is no longer going to be a problem. So let's talk about it. Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new or part of the large percentage of people who are still not subscribed to this channel, make sure that you do that so that these videos will show right up in your feed. Make sure to like the video if you're enjoying all the content. All right, so I have read through most of these already, and I do have to say they are quite nice. There is a lot of really positive changes here, and I'm gonna go over what I think are the most impactful ones, what I think about the vast majority of the changes, and the first thing that I have to say, this new layout that they've done here is awesome. I really, really like it because it allows you to look at the simple things if that's what you want to look at, and for the people who do want to see more of the, you know, specifics and the nitty gritty, they can see those. This is going to be on flask and ailment mitigation. An interesting thing that we're seeing is, you remember how we were talking about elemental damage over time? Well, it turns out that they are moving a bunch of damage into elemental damage over time, and they are going to be changing elemental overload and elemental equilibrium. Huge change, really happy for that. Can't wait to see that on day three. As well as addressing the extreme power of auras and curses, while in improving the strength of these mechanics for builds with a smaller investment. That is really, really, really good to hear. I'm super happy about that as well. We'll see how it works. I wonder if hatred is going to survive. Anyways, let's move into what actually happened in this manifesto portion. So in 3.15, we changed how flasks prevent ailments and curses on you, but didn't provide enough reasonable alternatives for mitigating ailments. And this is true. The issue was that there just simply was not enough ways through your flask to be able to mitigate ailments because the flask didn't last long enough. You either, on a lower powered character, you couldn't get enough flash charges to actually be able to handle them, and there just wasn't very much, you know, to do about it. So what they've done is they've added in a bunch of just extra things that can allow you to become either immune to ailments or have be less affected by these ailments. And one of the major ones that I want to talk about, well, there's two major things. One is that purity of elements is a 50% aura, and it's going to just make you immune to all elemental ailments. Super interesting. It's also 20 to 34% to all elemental resistances. That's really interesting. This is not something that I was expecting, but absolutely an awesome change. Because Purity of Elements before was just kind of whatever, but now it actually feels like it has a real purpose. Super good change. They're also putting in uh, Steel Skin is going to make you immune to bleeding. That's going to be very nice for those builds that do end up using Steel Skin, like on left click and things like that. The Tempest Shield change, um, now a reservation effect that grants immunity to shock. One thing of note here is that for the utility flasks that provide immunity, there is going to be less duration. However, as we'll see later on in here, they are buffing the base duration of pretty much all utility flasks. It's really, really, really not going to be that big of a deal. They're also going to be adding in new tiers of modifiers to these immunity to ailments, and also some ailments are going to give you like up to 17 seconds of immunity. That's for the life and mana flasks. They're also making it a little bit easier to get things like re reduced effect of curses. This is really good for builds that try to, say, become completely unaffected by curses. It should be way easier to invest into those things now. A new keystone passive skill is added to the center of a tree that causes intelligence to provide no inherent bonus to energy shield, but instead reduces elemental ailment duration on you. I'm very curious to see the numbers about this because this could be pretty nice. Reduced elemental ailment duration is something that is mainly on the top left of the tree, I'm pretty sure. Avoidance is in the bottom right. So if this makes it easier to get 100% reduced duration of elemental ailments on you, if you're not an energy shield based character, or maybe you just don't use energy shield in any way, maybe you're a mana based character that takes the node that reduces all of your uh, energy shield to zero, or you're just a life-based character towards the left side of the tree might be really, really nice. We're going to have to see. And then the big one, Soul of Brian King, upgraded Soul of the Brian King Pantheon now grants cannot be frozen instead of you cannot be frozen if you've been frozen recently. I am probably going to use this on so many of my characters, so I just don't have to worry about being frozen ever again. There's a lot of these down here that are nice as well. There's like, uh, we're getting like, you know, better mitigation of poison and chaos damage over time and reduce shock duration. And there's a bunch of cool ones in here. Notably, uh, Soul of Yugal is going to give a 50% chance to reflect hexes, and it's also going to make you take reduced reflected damage 50% uh, instead of 25. That's going to make it way easier to get 
reflect immunity on builds. And then also the upgraded Soul of Eagle now grants 30% reduced effect of curses, going to be very, very nice for trying to get that 100% reduced effect of curses. Exactly like what we needed before when they made all these changes previously, this is a very, very, very solid update. Super excited about it. They have also made it so that most of the sources of things that say give you like avoid elemental ailments or stuns or like shock chill, all that kinds of things, those have all been buffed just across the board on pretty much all jewels and crafts and items and pretty much everything that you can get. There is a ton of new modifiers that are going to make ailments much more easy to deal with as you invest into them. Another thing that's really interesting is that jewel corruptions, they said that they were going to do this before. I don't 100% know how I feel about this, but adding an implicit modifier with 20-25% to 25 chance to avoid ignite, chill, freeze, shock, poison, bleed, or stun. I'm assuming that these are an or in between each of these, right? It's just gonna be one. It's a now a possible outcome when corrupting all jewels. Interestingly, I think maybe if you double corrupted, you could potentially get like two of these. And this opens up the potential for very, very high investment builds to is maybe completely become immune to ailments of certain kinds if they just decide to go for those kinds of corruptions. Not exactly something that I would have been happy with if this was going to be one of the main changes, but on top of all of the other changes that we've got, this is actually really, really cool. Because you can fill in those little gaps in your build with just corrupted jewels, right? Like you can take like life and, you know, whatever basic damage jewels, corrupt them, hope to get something that's going to allow you to avoid bleed or stun or poison or freeze or things like that. Really, really awesome. One thing of note is that the Ghastly Theater is going to be granting bleed Bleeding cannot be inflicted on you. Interestingly, I was going to use this for one of my builds, so that's kind of nice that it's just going to make you immune to bleed, so that's, you know, awesome. And then on top of that, now with the Kikizaru ring with 60%, it's significantly easier to get completely unaffected by curses with one of these for any totem builds that do want to use that. Awesome changes, honestly. I feel like this whole section is very, very good on ailment mitigation. I am much happier after reading this with the way that ailments are being handled. Seems like we actually have the tools to be able to handle these ailments. Super happy with this. Very, very positive on this for the first time in a long time. Now, flasks. Many flask modifiers grant buffs during flask effect, which isn't well suited to life or mana flash, short and reactive nature. The solution is adding new modifiers to life and mana flash that are impactful, but brief and have a duration rather than applying during flask effect. This is something that makes sense and I'm glad that this is the way that they went with it because the idea is, is that typically when you use a life or mana flask, you are meant to use it as like, oh, my life is low, I need to hit this life flask, or oh, my mana is getting low, I need to replenish it. It doesn't really make sense preemptive buffs on you on things that just get removed as soon as they hit max. So this makes a lot more sense and I'm glad to see it. Now going into the specifics here, there's not a lot to go over. Um, basically, it's just immunity to hinder and immunity to maim, which is kind of nice. I really hope that they make more of the random slow effects in the game hinders or maims because there's lots of things like delirium hands that come out of the ground that slow you that are just really annoying and I'd like a way to deal with them. If that is considered a hinder or a maim and I can remove that, this is probably my second favorite change of the entire thing after the immunity to a freeze that we're going to get. So hopefully that's the case. I'm actually not 100% certain, but if it's not, you should change it into being hinder or maim. And then also recover an additional 40% of life recovery over 10 seconds if used while not on full life. This is going to be a very good change with the other change that we're going to be seeing to life and mana flasks in a little bit. That's pretty much it for that. Utility flasks are usually used proactively, but the ailment protection modifiers introduced in 3.15 work by reacting to an ailment on you. This was something that I just didn't really understand, right? Utility flasks are like, you hit them, you just try to keep them up all the time. And having to like hold on to them to use them reflexively didn't really feel great. So they're going to make it so that it is going to be reducing the flask duration and it will grant us that ailment immunity that we had before. And it says, note the base durations on utility flasks have been increased to compensate. That is going to be very nice. So as you can see, it's 35% less duration at the highest tier. There are going to be other tiers of this as far as I'm aware, but we're going to get back our immunity to whatever effects that we like through our passive flasks. So that's a really big change. I'm glad that they uh, went back on that and gave it back to us, at least in some manner. Utility flasks are sustainable with enough character damage and clear speed, but there aren't easy ways to sustain utility flasks for less powerful characters. When you are a super high powered character who's like zooming through maps and you don't have any issue with that kind of thing, you're gonna have flash charges, you're not worried about it. But slower characters or people who like to play more methodically, you just run out of flash charges 
almost instantly and there's not really much that you can do about it. This should be nice, we'll have to see because there's some specifics that they said that they're not completely finished on the numbers with. Just extending the utility flask duration as I talked about before, the Quicksilver and Silver flasks as well as like Diamonds, Granite Shades are now up to six seconds. Um, I really don't care about any of these. I mean, Stib Knight's cool, Basalt kind of got killed. Sulfur Flask is interesting with the change that they made to Consecrated Ground, so that's going to be much more useful. I'm worried about the price of Bottled Faith if I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, Bismuth Flask, this is Elemental Resistances. Uh, you don't use these too often unless you use the unique one, so we'll see. And then Amethyst Flask also lasts a little bit longer. Now, now, these are some changes that they did make, but it does seem reasonable. This is keeping them at around the same amount of time that they were before because the bases are being increased in duration. So I think that this is fine. Not really a nerf in any meaningful way. Also, they are adding and improving flask investment in the dexterity area of the passive skill tree. Pathfinder potentially really good next league. We'll see. And even after lowering the power of many unique flasks in 3.15, unique flasks still outclass most magic utility flasks. In addition, the item level of flasks did not matter after a certain point. Something that I was worried about when I was reading this, as they say, as they say this, I'm like, oh no, they're gonna nerf unique flasks. They went the opposite direction. I'm super happy about this. They are adding more power into the base flasks because they're going to be adding in tiers of the different mods. Now, some people are probably gonna be a little bit upset about this. I think that it is a good give and take that we get more power potentially out of these flasks and it's in line with all of the other gear that we have in the game, making it so that you can roll very nice flasks and they will be worth the investment to create. And then you can move them between characters. I think it's a pretty cool change. Now, there is a bunch of stuff here that you can see but we're just going to look at some of the first ones. You see how it's reduced effect and then the reduced effect goes into an immunity and we have a whole bunch of different changes here. Essentially, it's making it so that the most powerful version is at the top tier level and then you get less powerful versions before that as you're leveling up. Pretty much all there really is from here. Um, interestingly, as I said before, grants immunity to ignite, shock, poison, bleed, and chill for 15 to 17 seconds if you are used while those effects are on you, meaning that for a life or mana flask, you can become immune to one of those things for essentially ever, right? If you use it while it's on you. I think this is gonna be really good for particularly bleeds and poisons. Also for bosses that ignite you constantly, like the, El I think it's the Constrictor. I don't remember which Elder Guardian it is, but he like ignites you on every hit or maps where you get ignited by every hit. This should be super, super useful. Very nice. The remove a curse on use. Uh, I mean, I would have liked to see maybe a short immunity to curses on this, but we have enough curse reduced effectiveness on the tree now that it's not that big of a deal. Very, very nice. I'm super happy about these changes as well. Blasts are getting a little bit more of their utility back, which is nice. Then they're going to be buffing the Enkindling Orb effect. Um, there's not much to talk about here. It's just some slight changes to how the Enkindling Orbs work. Most notably, it is going to be the increased effect. This is going from 50 to 70 instead of 40 to 50. This might make some flasks pretty interesting going forward. We'll have to see. The increased duration one was the one that was used the most often on some unique flasks, but now this is a change that I wasn't expecting. Um, they are going to be moving the flask mod modifiers onto base belts instead of on influence belts, and they're going to be making them a little bit more powerful. That's pretty interesting. Uh, I think it's a good change, but it is going to make belts a little bit harder to roll if you don't want these modifiers. 40% increased flash charges gained though is pretty massive. Not gonna lie, this is a lot. This is going on base belts, might be a pretty big buff for how often flasks can be up. This is the change that I talked about earlier. This is the one with the change to life flasks. I think this is actually really, really cool, and I'm excited to see how good these end up being. Instant recovery life flasks are by far the most reliable tool for survival. They absolutely are. And the change that they're making is that keeping the total life recovery from all life flasks the same means they're not getting nerfed, but half the amount of time for this to occur, which doubles their healing per second. This is a huge improvement to how effective non-instant life flasks are at keeping you alive in tough situations. Situations. This means that things like catalyzed flasks that are healing you super fast are going to be pretty close to being instant. It's going to give you a ton of health over, say, a few seconds instead of being like five to eight seconds. It might be two to three seconds or something like that. This is something I wasn't expecting, and it's actually pretty nice that we're not going to just be using panicked flasks only. Because honestly, I haven't used anything but a panicked life flask in a long time now. And especially beyond that, when they did the change to low life being 50%, panicked flasks were basically the only thing that I would use. This makes me think that maybe I'll try one of the other ones, so that's pretty cool. Um, there's one here that's talking about there's no accessible tools for a player to change their charge gain method. Um, they said they're gonna rework the survival jewels, but they haven't gotten through to this. This is interesting. I'm curious to see what they're going to do here, making a quest jewel actually worthwhile. A rangers don't have a form of life recovery that they excel at. I never really thought about this, but it is true. They, they don't really have anything that they're just particularly good at. Giving them a special recovery method through flash should be kind of interesting. 
thing. We'll have to see what those new nodes look like. And if you can look at the specifics, um, it's going to be things like added life regeneration if you've used a flask in the last 10 seconds or mana gained on hit with attacks. That's pretty cool. Mana gained on hit with attacks if you've used a mana flask in the past 10 seconds. The thing about this is, is that most of the time when ranger builds are worried about mana, they have very small amounts of mana that they're just recovering constantly. I don't know if I would want to invest in something that requires that I use a mana flask unless that mana flask is giving me something else. It, we're getting like life flask charge on hitting enemies with a short cooldown, new sources of life and mana flask gaining charges every three seconds. There's a lot of very interesting things here. And that is pretty much it for the flask and ailment mitigation. This is the most positive I've been about a ch like list of changes that GGG has given us in it feels like a very long time. I am pretty much exclusively positive on this entire list of things that I've looked at. All of the changes seem good. It seems like this is what we needed last league. If we would have had these changes, I think things would have been way, way better. Just seems like the obvious choice to make it so that we have ways to invest into mitigation on all of these different ailments and things like that, as well as making life, mana, and other flasks seemingly, you know, useful and powerful. So super positive on these changes. Keep in mind, the next two days have some pretty big implications, and day two, which is going to be the changes to recovery and defensive layers, is the one that we're really waiting for. Super positive on day one. Couldn't really ask for more out of this one. I think they did an awesome job. Super, super positive with it. So remember, boys, if you enjoy the content, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel for more content similar to this, so you don't miss those videos coming up, and stay safe out there in right class. And I'll see you guys in the next video.